How many of you grew up with a pet or have one now? Wow. That looks about right. Actually, over 70% of people in America have at least one pet or companion animal. In fact, kids are more likely to live with a pet than what they are with their biological father or siblings. And children seven to eight years of age rank pets higher than people as providers of comfort, self-esteem, and as confidants. Animals are such agreeable friends. They ask no questions. They pass no criticism. So wrote George Eliot. That's a big reason we love them so much. Uh-oh. Oh, my gosh. I don't know who stuck this photo in there of me back in the day when I had some pretty long hair. But anyway, back then when I was growing up in rural West Virginia, I had all types of pets and animals. And when I became a veterinarian, I also, and an equine surgeon, I have treated countless animals in my career. However, one patient sticks out. While on faculty at LSU, I treated a very special patient, a pony named Molly. After Hurricane Katrina, Molly became stranded in a barn for nearly 10 days before she was rescued, adopted, and taken to a nearby farm. Unfortunately, about two months later, she was attacked by a dog, and the power of the dog's bite crushed the blood vessels and effectively killed the lower part of her right front leg. Her veterinarian contacted me to ask if I would be willing to consider doing an amputation and fitting Molly with a prosthesis. After some debate and being very skeptical, I decided that after watching Molly, it was in fact her that convinced me if there was ever a patient to perform this on, it was her. Fortunately, 10 years later, Molly is still going strong. However, her purpose and role in life have changed. She now visits cancer camps, children's hospitals, veteran care and elder care facilities, and gives them hope and courage and lets them know that it's okay to look and be different. I will never forget the confident smile on this young boy's face who lost a leg to bone cancer or to this elderly veteran amputee who literally came to life when they met Molly. Molly is a perfect example of the power of the human-animal bond. In many instances, an animal or pet is the most important or stable part of a family structure, perhaps the only positive relationship someone has. We know that women who are in situations of domestic violence will oftentimes not leave it simply because they're fearful for what might happen to that pet left behind. And yet, very few shelters will allow a pet. Bev and Roy are homeless here in Columbus, Ohio. They have been offered shelter and housing but will not take it because they would have to leave their four-legged furry family members behind. When asked, why not just give up your pets, get off the street, and get into housing, they both said to me, we cannot do that. I cannot give up Boo Boo or Tigger. He's my family. That would be like me giving up my child. Now listen to that. People in situations of homelessness, or domestic violence will not give up their pets. That's a powerful bond. Research has shown and is recognizing the importance of this human-animal bond on the health and well-being of individuals, families, and communities. Researchers have coined a term for this phenomenon, zoea. Zoea are those positive health benefits for their physical, social, behavioral, emotional, mental, or psychological for people who have a pet or interact with one. So why care about this? The reason is it's important for us to convince the healthcare community of the need for change. From, from physicians to caregivers, insurance providers to policymakers, they need to understand and recognize the legitimate impact and importance of animals on the health and well-being of people. You're probably sitting there saying, okay, show me the proof. Well, I will share some examples and data that I'm pretty confident will convince you of this phenomenon. There's been substantial research documenting this, and I will provide some, including some physiological evidence, including hormonal changes, decreases in stress and blood pressure, improved weight loss, de decreases in cholesterol and triglycerides, among other health benefits. Billions of dollars are saved each year in the healthcare system when people are healthy, and it's been shown that animals play a vital role in that good physical and mental health. I will share three examples with you where it's been shown that pet interaction is actually having a positive benefit on these individuals. Autism, Alzheimer's, and post-traumatic stress syndrome. 
Autistic spectrum disorder is actually a complex developmental disability that typically first manifests in early childhood and is characterized by an inability to communicate or interact socially with others. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention have estimated that the prevalence of this has increased to one in 68 births in the United States, or one in 54 boys. Take a moment and read this letter from a 14-year-old autistic boy who was at a correctional facility in Marysville, Ohio, and he was being treated for physical, emotional, and learning challenges. Isn't it ironic that what he identified that Oswald needed, which he was actually training to become an adoptable dog, were the very things that he needed as a child but did not experience. Family, love, fun, people to be around, and a set of rules to follow. Oswald gave this boy a chance for a better life. And that's only one of the reasons I'm so passionate about the human-animal bond. Research with people that have Alzheimer's or dementia are remarkably similar. Nearly 5.5 million people in the United States have Alzheimer's, and millions more have other forms of dementia. So how can an animal or a pet help these individuals? They serve as companions. Dogs are naturally born listeners and can provide positive nonverbal feedback and communication. And animals have been shown to decrease anxiety, agitation, and aggressive behavior. This is Alan when he was 78 years old. He has non-Alzheimer's dementia and was participating in an equine therapeutic intervention study along with some others and part of that was to visit horses on a regular basis. After every visit to the horses, Alan would repeatedly ask, when can we go see Jack? Can I ride Jack? Can I have Jack? Well, Alan could remember much, but he never forgot these horse experiences. And in fact, four years later, on his 82nd birthday, he asked again, when can we go see Jack? Can I ride him? Can I have him? And so you can see the power and importance of the human-animal bond is as strong as ever, regardless of age or mental capacity. Post-traumatic stress syndrome, or PTSD, is a psychiatric disorder that can occur following the witnessing or experiencing of a life-threatening or traumatic event, whether that be combat in a war zone, a serious accident, a natural disaster, a terrorist attack, or physical or sexual assault. Nearly 8% of Americans will deal with PTSD sometime during their lifetime. Meet Ryan. Ryan is a first year student at our College of Veterinary Medicine. I first became acquainted with Ryan last year when I read his personal essay as part of his application to veterinary school. And with Ryan's permission, I'm going to share his story. Ryan grew up like I did in rural West Virginia and he had a Cocker Spaniel named Jim that was his confidant for 11 years. When Jim died, Ryan experienced true grief for the first time at the age of 17. Seeking adventure in his life, he joined the Army and was later deployed to a war zone where he was critically injured. In fact, so much so that he had to retire with, from the military with medical conditions and also with a diagnosis of PTSD. Ryan said that although he recovered physically, the damage that was done would require more than medicine to heal. His mother, watching him struggle, gave him a life-changing gift, a runty Great Dane puppy that Ryan named Izzy. In Ryan's application, he said, this dog saved my life. It amazes me how the bond we developed brought me back to life. Izzy got me through some difficult times. When Izzy died about two years ago, Ryan's roommate noticed that Ryan was slipping backward in dealing with his PTSD. And he said to Ryan, maybe you should get another dog. And Ryan said, maybe I should. And so together they went out and found another Great Dane puppy. And Ryan appropriately and ironically named this new puppy and companion, Maybe. Ryan says that he's thankful and grateful for, for uh, maybe to help him get through and be successful in the stressful and rigorous demands of veterinary school. Now this Great Dane puppy will become a big dog. And not everyone can handle a Great Dane. So it's wise to consult a veterinarian about the most appropriate type of pet for a given situation so that you can actually achieve the health benefits that's meant to be had by having a pet. 
Also, not everyone can have a pet for a variety of reasons. Fortunately, it's been shown that even brief interactions with a pet can have those same positive benefits. So therefore, seek out opportunities and activities where you can interact with a pet or an animal. Perhaps you volunteer at a local shelter and walk dogs, or maybe you just go visit your friends or family who have a pet. So armed with this information, what can we do? We can tell our family and friends about Zoe and the positive health benefits on us, which is scientifically proven. We can talk to the healthcare professionals in the, on the human side and encourage change. Medical teams should be asking patients about pets in the medical history taking. The reason is this has been shown to increase rapport and trust with the physician and the entire healthcare team, which is likely to lead to the patient re revealing information important to their health care. If you have a pet and you're not asked about it in the medical history taking, take the time to tell them about the pet and the important role it plays in your life. We can also heighten the awareness among the health profession about the importance of incorporating a pet into the therapeutic or wellness plan because this has been shown to increase patient compliance. You can also simply ask your doctor or a healthcare professional how a pet might improve your health or that of a loved one. And finally, encourage your physician to write a prescription for a pet or an interaction with one. Speaking of that, and on a personal note, about a year ago, I was written this prescription, or I was given this prescription. Adopt two black miniature schnauzers and spend at least 10 minutes with them as needed to decrease stress and anxiety. I took that advice. And since adopting Travis Lincoln and Teddy Luther in December of 2014, my life and perspectives have changed dramatically. My stress level is down, my priorities are different, and my personal and professional relationships are enhanced. I can tell you that Travis and Teddy make me laugh and smile multiple times a day, every day. So what can we do? We can actually encourage the healthcare profession, the public, governmental agencies, health insurance providers, and others to understand, accept, and embrace the power and importance of the human-animal bond and zoea. Remember the power of a pet. Now, I couldn't end this without introducing you to the two boys in my life that have actually enriched it and inspired this presentation. So join me in welcoming Travis Lincoln and Teddy Luther.